So let me get started here. So it says an um, elephant or um, something is located at some latitude, lambda. So I think I'm going to treat this as an angle. Calculate the centripetal acceleration of the elephant resulting from the rotation of Earth around its polar axis for ah, this value of angle. Okay. Reading the question, I think it's uh, meaning for me to make a bit of a um, um, simplifying assumption. One of the simplifying assumption is, you know, an elephant standing on the ground of Earth. It, that could involve a lot of complicated forces. And for the purpose of answering this question, I don't have to worry about any of it. I can treat this like a uniform circular motion of uh, this radius. So all I really need to figure out is acceleration of this elephant towards the axis, just directly towards the axis, not towards the center of the earth or anything, towards the axis, um, um, making this uniform circular motion at the radius r. So once you have that far, then the best starting place is the formula for the centripetal acceleration, which, by the way, I don't ask you to memorize a lot of formulas. If anything, I actually discourage you from memorizing a lot of formulas. But this is the one formula I would say, memorize it, because it will save you so much headache if you simply have centripetal acceleration, memorize this, v squared, speed, tangential speed squared over the radius of the circle that it's traveling. So. If you have that, then great. Um, I guess the geometry work that you have to do here is figuring out this radius r, radius of the circle, because that is not the same thing as this radius, which is the radius of the Earth. Um, the circle that the elephant is traveling in, that's not the same circle as a, what they call great circle on a sphere. It's the, giving you the radius of the sphere. So. Uh, this is where situa so situations dealing with the geometry, my number one advice is draw auxiliary figures, draw more lines. That might help you visualize what might be, uh, help, help you visualize useful information. So I have this axis, that's a line. Um, I have line connecting the axis to the point, that's a line. And as you draw these lines, I hope you come to this realization that this is a right angle. So you have a right triangle here. And, oh, wait, I think uh, the quickest way I can get it is, okay, I have this. That kind of looks parallel to this. I can probably justify that. Then I have this angle here, which should be the same angle as this angle here. So I have this right triangle where I know the hypotenuse, this should be the radius of Earth, and I'm looking for the, um, the adjacent side to the angle. So I can write down, okay, cosine of that angle, lambda, is the adjacent, the R I'm looking for, over the radius of Earth. So that's it. That, um, so if you work through that much geometry, then you have the expression for R, you can now, uh, um, uh, solve this for r is equal to radius of earth times cosine of the angle. Plug that in here. Um, oh, but before you plug it in, um, as you look at it, I hope you see uh, you are not given the velocity of the um, of the elephant. So. Even though this might be the form in which you memorize the centripetal acceleration, you have to do a little bit of rewriting. And I have a feeling that in that process of rewriting, the R will get um, kind of uh, moved around. So let me not plug in for R yet and just to work through this expression first. So I need to think through this situation and try to figure out, hmm, how can I get V? So if I'm looking for V, which is speed, um, which um, if I had some distance that elephant travels, and the time in which the elephant travels, 
I could get at the idea of the tangential speed. And here, I think the easiest one is the distance elephant travels over the course of a day. So the time I'm looking for is one day, and the distance I'll be looking for is the circumference of this circle. Another, but this circle. So it should be 2 pi times the radius r. So I imagine plugging it in here. Ah, that's where r will get moved around. So let me just go through that. So I have v, uh, 2 pi, same r as that. So that's why I'm using the same symbol, divide by 1 day squared divided by r so let me just work through this algebra so that i need to plug in r just once um, i have 2 pi squared divided by 1 day squared and i have r squared divided by r canceling those out just r so this r i can replace that with this expression of r r earth times cosine of lambda. Okay, I think I'm all done. Uh, all the expressions here are where I can figure out the number and plug in the numbers for. So let me do that. I'm going to do this on Ofram Alpha because uh, <laughs> it'll help me avoid doing tedious unit conversion. So let me just uh, plug it things in. So I have 2 pi squared divided by 1 day squared times uh, I think uh, Wolfram Alpha knows radius of Earth. So I'm gonna just put that as a phrase times cosine of 33.0 degrees. Uh, let's put that in and see if uh, Wolfram Alpha understood it correctly. Okay, Earth equatorial radius, that sounds right. Cosine of that, okay. Um, yeah, that's the correct unit for uh, acceleration. So yeah, 0 0.0283 meter per second squared. Oh, oh or it's uh, asking for in centimeters per second squared. So this one, 2.83. 2.83 centimeter per second squared. So yeah, that's, a, uh, that's a this question. And uh, again, we'll do more circular motion question um, uh, will do more situations where you are expected to have this formula memorized. <laughs> because uh, you will see a situation that involves circular motion and you have to recognize from seeing the situation described as circular motion that this is gonna be the acceleration.